In 2006, a pastor from Gabon called Frank Cabele reportedly tried to replicate Jesus' miracle of walking on water. He drowned right in front of his church members. In 2012, a South African pastor called Letobo Rabalago sprayed his church members with pesticide as a way of performing miracle and it ended up having severe health consequences on the church members. Some of them were reported to have had severe cough that lasted about 7 months. The pastor was later prosecuted for what he did. Now, wait a minute. If Jesus walked on water, why couldn't the pastor from Gabon do the same? And if he could turn water into wine, why didn't the pesticide turn into some miraculous concoction that healed the people is that one too difficult for god to do or is it just the case that god has stopped performing those miracles or they were never true in the first place i just give you two examples but i can give you a zillion examples of instances when people try to exercise their faith by going the extreme mile and it ended up very badly what is going on well to answer that question i've discovered three conditions that every miracle that jesus performed abided by or complied with three conditions and largely i've come to find that many of the miracles that were expected to happen that did not happen were in violation of these three conditions that jesus followed meticulously unfortunately i realize nowadays that a lot of christians make the mistake of praying for and expecting miracles using the method that violates these three conditions that i have found and i'm not god to say that oh if you just do this your miracles will happen or if you just do these three things your miracles will surely happen but if the son of god the firstborn of all creation the one who is the perfect example for us to emulate jesus christ followed these three conditions meticulous to the point that there were times when he refused to perform certain miracles because they were in violation of this condition then i am very convinced that those are the three conditions that we are all supposed to follow and if we do most of the things we pray for will actually happen and i've seen it happen in my life several times jesus is recorded to have performed more than 30 distinct miracles in the bible and in each case where he was trying to solve a human problem every miracle he performed abided by these three fundamental conditions that i have discovered now what are these conditions three conditions three conditions what are the conditions my brother three so the first one there was no other way out what this means is that in every case where jesus performed this miracle it appeared clearly that there was no other option out of the situation if there was another option he would take that option i'll give you examples as we move on but that's the idea number two human effort was completely exhausted what that means is that everything that human beings could do about the situation he was trying to solve with a miracle had to be done about it he didn't perform any miracle without letting the people there do the best they can do about the situation very interesting and we'll look at examples as i said now number three the motive behind the performance of these miracles were to solve a genuine need and not to simply enjoy god's power what that means is that god's power is not like an abundance of money somewhere that has been given to us where we use it to buy what we feel like buying get what we feel like getting enjoy life go on trips and all that he performed these miracles when there was genuine need not to simply enjoy the power that god has made available to us because god's power is not meant to be enjoyed in that sense of the word it is meant to intervene in crucial circumstances not to replace hard work or human effort but to save the day intervene in crucial circumstances when there is no other option so these are the three conditions now as i said if jesus christ himself did not violate any of these three conditions then why would you think that if you violate these conditions and still pray for a miracle it would happen i don't think so and if jesus's actions don't show that it can happen to then i think it's fruitless expecting a miracle while violating these conditions now there are a lot of miracles we could look at but i'll give you two of jesus's miracles and explain how they all satisfy these three conditions after that i'll also show you two instances when Jesus refused to perform a miracle when these three conditions were not met again I'll go one step further and show you why based on these conditions the two miracles that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that failed actually failed my goal is that by the time you finish watching this video and I promise you by the time you finish watching this video you would have clarity about what to pray for 
and what not to pray for when to expect a miracle and when not to expect a miracle and i think this is very crucial why because when you keep praying for something that is not supposed to be given and it is not given it can shake your faith it can shake your belief in god it can make you highly disappointed feelings like depression and all its friends will become byproducts that you will be enjoying but if you learn to ask what you are supposed to ask and expect a miracle when you should expect a miracle it will be as if miracles always happen whenever you ask for them and your life will be so much more fulfilling rather than highly disappointing over and over again at the end of the video i'm going to give you three questions based on everything that we'll learn and i'll ask you to tell me how those real life situations that we face every day should be approached based on this knowledge and whether we should expect god's intervention in those instances it will be a very interesting one stick with me to the very end i promise you this video can truly change your life but before we start if you are new here hit the subscribe button below turn on the notification bell that whenever we post a new video on this channel you're going to get notified on this channel ek inspire what we do is extract crucial lessons from important stories one of the videos we shot recently was about me and why i quit a very interesting and promising job and the lessons that you may want to apply in your life if it's applicable to you you can click somewhere around this video right now you'll see the pop-up you can click right on it and watch that video for yourself now let's start so two miracles that jesus did that followed the three conditions that i told you the first one feeding five thousand men with five loaves of bread and two fish now in this story the multitude followed jesus to a remote location and all of a sudden they were caught up in a time where it was it was late in the day and the nearest villages where they could get any food were miles away so it was a very unsettling situation especially for jesus's disciples and they came telling him uh what do we do now because these people they are a lot and there is no food here if we don't feed them there will be chaos but jesus realized that if they also send them miles away hours to go and look for food that will also be chaotic and so what he did was to perform a miracle by taking food that was available that somebody had praying over it multiplying it and feeding it to the people now how does this miracle satisfy the three conditions the first condition was there was no way out in this case there was need for some supernatural intervention why because they were suddenly caught up in a place far away from every town if there was any other option like going to a town close by that is what they would have done there wouldn't have been any miracle if it was the case that they were not so far away from anywhere they could get food if it was the case that they were not even hungry in the first place there would not have been that miracle so at the end of the day sending them to get food was chaotic letting them stay hungry was chaotic so it was a troubling situation there seemed to be no way out and so there had to be a miracle that's the first condition the second one human effort was completely exhausted why do you think for one moment that jesus did not pray for manna to fall from heaven that was an option that had happened before and it happened in the wilderness that was an easy option to go to okay there is no food uh it happened in the olden days let's pray for manner again but no jesus asked them that what food can they get and they want to bring the food that was available they had to bring what human effort could produce the best that human effort could produce the best solution that they could give to the situation had to be done and completed human effort had to be exhausted and when it was exhausted jesus now took what they were able to produce and then prayed over it to multiply it so that's the second condition human effort was completely exhausted number three the motive was not to enjoy god's power but to meet a pressing need a genuine need an actual need jesus didn't perform this miracle after the people had probably eaten and they just wanted a dessert and then he decided to oh i mean there are heavenly provisions already so why not just let some wine pop up somewhere that they will go and drink it was not for enjoyment it was to meet a pressing need the miracle was not targeted at self-gratification or pleasure it was a necessity to find a solution to a time bomb that was waiting to explode those are the three conditions and they were all met next miracle jesus performed turning water into wine 
In this miracle, Jesus, his mom, and disciples were invited to a wedding. And while they were at the wedding, there was wine. But they drank this wine and there was an embarrassing situation. Why? Because the wine was in shortage. Now you have to understand even this, the context of this. Because in those days, Jewish weddings were such a big deal. And they could last several days. And one of the most important things you can do is to feed the people well. If you were not able to take good care of your guests, it was a huge embarrassment that would hang over the family for life. And so wine shortage was such a big deal in that moment. What happened? They came to Jesus, told him about the situation, and Mary, Jesus' mother, told him that he has to do something indirectly. And he told the servants at the wedding to come to Jesus and do whatever he tells them to do. And so Jesus asked them, listen to this very carefully. He asked them to fill all the drums available with water. And when they filled them with water, they were about 20 to 30. Then he prayed over it, turned it into wine. Now, how does this miracle satisfy the three conditions? Let's look at the first one. There was no other way out. Jesus did not perform this miracle when there was probably wine elsewhere that was going to be transported there. He didn't perform this miracle when there was probably wine that was being prepared but it was not ready yet if there was any other option to get wine Jesus would not have performed this miracle he had to because there was no other way out the second point human effort was completely exhausted how you see when Jesus decided to do this miracle he didn't say oh don't worry let me just go to the corner and pray and there will be jars from heaven filled up with wine already prepared he didn't do that he didn't say oh arrange the empty drums i'll just pray they'll be filled with wine he didn't do that he said fill the jars with water in other words give me the best human effort that is closest to wine that you can get do your best for me i know you don't have wine what do you have you have jars okay bring them you have water okay bring them this is the closest thing you can get to a wine right all right bring all that human effort the best human effort you can produce in this situation bring it arrange it before me and i'll bless it so human effort that could be used to solve this problem was used until it was fully exhausted and then jesus came up with this miracle the third thing the motive was to solve a pressing need yes this is wine but it was to solve a pressing need of embarrassment and not to simply enjoy god's power if there was not such a pressing need that embarrassment looming jesus would not have performed this miracle and if it was not such a big deal at a jewish wedding in those days jesus would not have performed this miracle it was absolutely necessary and it was not for enjoyment but to save the image of the family that day that was the real motive now those are two miracles jesus performed and they all met these conditions let me show you two instances when jesus refused to perform a miracle and let me show you how the miracles he refused to perform did not align with these three conditions the first one when satan was tempting jesus satan asked jesus to jump from a cliff because the angels of god will carry him in their hands so that he will not use his feet to hit against a stone so that he will be safe and jesus refused to perform this miracle he found an excuse in the bible not to perform this miracle now let's see how this miracle measures up with the three criteria that we have listed the first one there was no way out jesus was on top of the cliff if there was no way out jesus would have jumped trust me but there was a way out he could have easily walked down and so there was a way out first condition not met second condition human effort was completely exhausted human effort was not even exhausted in this case why jesus didn't even make any effort to use his human capacity to solve the problem by walking down so the second condition was also not met the third condition the third condition is the miracle is not supposed to be to simply enjoy god's power but to solve a pressing need but in this case it was supposed to just enjoy god's power oh jump they will carry you right and jesus refused to do it because god's power is not for that it's not for cruising in the air and enjoying life and living anyhow it is to solve pressing situations it's not to replace human effort it's not to replace hard work it is to solve situations that are difficult to escape from that's the first miracle jesus refused to perform and they didn't meet these three criteria the other miracle jesus refused to perform was turning stone into bread now this one is quite tricky right because jesus is in the wilderness all right and he just finished fasting and he was hungry so you might say that there was really a need right okay now let's look at it very carefully 
the first condition is there was no other way out right now in this case jesus was in the in the wilderness but then he had the option of going to get food in fact that was already the plan that when he finishes fasting he'll get back to the town and get food that option was already available it was already planned out and so this new suggestion was not the only way out remember in the case where he fed the five thousand people by performing a miracle the situation was such that sending them to get food was going to bring chaos not sending them to get food was going to bring chaos so it was a situation that necessitated something miraculous happening in this scenario there was not really that that set of conditions that made it impossible for him to go get food and so there was some way out so the first condition was not met second condition human effort was completely exhausted well he didn't even make the attempt human effort was not used in any way because he could have walked as i said to a town nearby to get food which was already the plan anyway so human effort was not completely exhausted the third condition the third condition is whether the motive is to solve a genuine need or simply enjoy god's power now in this instance yes there was genuine need because he was hungry but when you look at it closely if you've not made any effort or tried any other option available to you and the first point of call is just to perform a miracle then at the end of the day you didn't even explore if there was genuine need yes you may be actually hungry but you didn't even explore the options available to you your first point of call was let me perform a miracle and so at the end of the day if you look at it closely it was also a case of enjoying the power that was available to him and not making good use of his human effort so you see you see the difference so once again the third condition was also not met now if jesus refused to perform miracles when these conditions were not met why would you want to pray for a miracle when these conditions are not met he is the son of god you are a child of god he knows better trust me now with this understanding let's look at the two miracles we mentioned at the beginning of this video and measure it with these three conditions and understand why they probably didn't happen the first one was a pastor trying to replicate the miracle jesus did by walking on water he actually went to the shore told his congregants that i'm coming to demonstrate how jesus walked on water and stepped in the water actually things were getting out of hand but his followers were so sure and so confident in his words that they were expecting him to float back or something by the time they realized that no something was probably going wrong they tried searching for him and he was gone how does this miracle measure against the three criteria first was there any other way out absolutely i mean there was not even any need to try walking on water in this instance you decided to go there and demonstrate really jesus wouldn't do this in fact do you know that the only time jesus walked on water was when there was no boat whenever there was boat he entered the boat jesus entered the boat you step out of the boat that you want to walk on water and demonstrate what he didn't even do that the only time he, he walked on water was when there was a need there was no boat available so the first condition was not met second condition was there any way out absolutely there was a way out i mean you could have even wore life jacket in case it didn't happen but i guess that would have demonstrated that you didn't have enough faith right so at the end of the day well you had to do it that way but clearly there were options available to you to escape that danger the third thing was this to enjoy god's power or to solve a pressing need clearly there was no pressing need here unfortunately it was simply to enjoy god's power probably make a name for himself that oh yes i really do possess god's power and i i can walk on water and unfortunately that is not what jesus would do according to the examples that he has set for us so all the three conditions were not met that miracle should not have been attempted because jesus himself would not have attempted that miracle and he never did any miracle that did not meet the conditions hmm. okay second example so the second example where the pastor used a pesticide to try healing people and they ended up actually developing health complications as a result the pastor was even prosecuted i mean you would think that okay yeah he may probably be doing the wrong thing but he's a pastor and god he's using your name why don't you just perform the miracle let the people not get sick so that it saves the face of the church saves the name of the church saves your name as well but you see that is not what god cares about so once again let's look at how this miracle also measures according to these three criteria that we have the first one was that was there a way out was there any other option apart from using a, a pesticide i mean you could lay your hands on them you could use water as a point of contact if you needed some substance to to spray you could use 
water you could spray water there was there were a lot of ways out like you, you didn't have to endanger or use the dangerous thing you found to perform this miracle there were there was a way out that's the first condition it was not met the second condition was human effort completely exhausted absolutely not i mean they did try every means possible to use something else that was better and good and safe and not dangerous to perform this miracle and there was nothing and he had to use something at all cost and there was only pesticide and then he had to use pesticide absolutely not human effort was not completely exhausted the third thing was this miracle to enjoy the power of god to to just show off the power of god or there was really a pressing need to use pesticide to spray these people there was no pressing need to use pesticide to spray these people it was simply to probably show off make a name trend or something and that is not a miracle jesus himself would do he never did any miracle that did not meet these criteria i'm very 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 sure that there are instances in your life that you can remember vividly when you tried a lot of options there seemed to be no way out you did everything you thought you could do about a situation in your life and it seemed to be getting worse and worse and there seemed to be danger or a huge embarrassment loading and looming and you decided to turn to God that God help me and there was a supernatural turn around do you know why you followed these principles without knowing your actions met the three criteria first there was no way out and you turned to God number two human effort was completely exhausted you did everything you could do about the situation it was still getting out of hand and the motive was just to solve that need not to en enjoy God's power flex something or perform a miracle and make a name for yourself or anything like that there was a genuine pressing need and when you said that prayer you felt a peace in your heart and the next day something miraculous happened and you said oh it could this could only be God hey you said that oh now I know that God truly exists but then the next moments probably you thought that oh because that miracle happened now everything you pray for should happen oh no, God's power is not to replace your hard work it was to solve that pressing need in your life to intervene in situations that will save us hmm so now that you've seen the miracles performed by Jesus that followed these three criteria you've seen miracles that did not get performed by Jesus and they didn't follow these criteria and you see miracles performed by human beings that failed and they didn't follow this criteria i want to ask you three real life scenarios and i want you to tell me the answer in the comment section i want you to get this so the first one if you are traveling and you're somebody who is so spirit filled and you have faith that there can be no accident on the way is it advisable or will it make sense to wear a seat belt because a seat belt is supposed to protect you from danger so with this knowledge of the three conditions that are supposed to be met before you expect a miracle from god or before you turn to god for any intervention is it a good idea to wear a seat belt as a christian with a lot of faith that nothing will happen to you i want to hear your answer in the comment section that's the first question second question as a person who is so spirit filled who has been prayerful and you know that everything will work together for your good god has only plans of for good for you to give you a future and a hope and a good life as somebody who believes in all these powerful words and you are a student is it still necessary to study the whole textbook or you can just say a prayer the night before the exam put your hand somewhere open and believe that god is guiding you to learn certain specific things that will come for you to get an a in your exam based on these three criteria is it advisable or it doesn't make sense or would jesus do that or he would study the textbook from cover to cover what will he do what are we supposed to do as christians who are students based on these three criteria give me the answer in the comment section i want to know i really want to i want you to get this the third example i'll give you and i want you to respond to is that for all your financial needs for all your monetary needs is your first point of call supposed to be god are you supposed to pray that god gives you all the money you need all the things you need to survive in this world are you supposed to pray for miracles to happen in your life to get all the financial needs you have based on the three criteria that we've discussed in this video tell me your answer in the comment section and just to refresh your memory the, the three criteria are first of all there should be no way out the second one human effort must be completely exhausted and the third one the miracle must be performed to meet a pressing need and not to simply enjoy god's power 
these are the criteria that every miracle jesus performed followed so every miracle you expect in your life should follow them too so based on that tell me these are the three questions i've asked you i want you to tell me the answer in the comment section i'm expecting it so that has been it for today if you watched to this point congratulations well done because this is very important i entreat you share this video with somebody share this video in the church group share this video christians must understand this humanity needs to understand this and i hope you got a lot of value from this actually if you watched up to this point please type i followed in the comment section and let me know i want to know those who've watched till this point let me know that you followed this completely so just type i followed i followed that's it the other people will not know why you are typing that and they will not understand but if you watch this point all of us will understand that yes you are part of the gang <laughs> yeah so this has been it for today until i see you again in our next video that is already been prepared remember that life always gives us episodes of chaos and peace but after each episode you should pause and ask yourself what can i learn from this